welcome to Cremation Pendant Tutorial. I'm Anderson. We lied like a moth to the flame studios. And this is how we get it done. First, it's really important to strain your cremation, your cremains, through a sifter. This is actually from my Frit sifting set. Uh, not exactly sure the micron, but it comes out really small. Which is really important because that's what keeps the nitrogen from off-gassing during the making of this pepper. To start first, we use an 18 millimeter flat rod. Uh, except for that's a 16, so we don't want that one. We want this one. 18 millimeter flat rod, uh, which we are going to draw down into a point at one end. Very important also because we're going to be incorporating fuming that you clean the, the glass very well before starting any of this. So there's a nice slender drawdown, and this is what we're going to start our pendant with. So we want to warm it again. Your ashes should be in a frit tray or something similar that you can slowly get some to stick to the glass. So just heat one side of this 18 mil rod, a little bit above where the taper begins, and just barely Rest it in the ash really quick. A little bit goes a really long ways. If it looks like you've got a bunch on there, you probably have way too much on there, and it's going to most likely off gas during the process of this getting your own encased. So then you want to do the exact same thing to the other side. If you get a little bit too much, like that's a little too much, add some off before it gets hot that too hot. Again, I can't repeat how important this is to not have a huge ton of ashes. This will probably be pretty good. So next, we're gonna warm it a little bit. Put some silver on there. So. I'll put a little gold after that. Then we'll go back and put just a tad more silver. That's gonna be sick. Come on around here a little bit. I need an eight millimeter round rod. We're gonna make two runs, one down each side of this flat part here to encase this ash. I usually run my glass just a little bit beyond where the end of the ash is which should really be no more than about an inch and a half. That's like max.
bahwa So with a 5 mil rod is usually what I putty up with when I'm trying to have a tight termination. And still gonna have a pretty big mass of glass by the time this is all spun down. So three would be a little too small. Five seems to be about right. I grab onto that and just slightly start to drag with my left hand as I spin a little bit more towards me, slightly faster with my right hand. This puts a nice gradual spin. I'm kind of also pushing in a little bit to help keep in case the rest of this ash. I'm also blowing off the fume that's not where the 8 mil rod I laid on there lies. So after I get my end kind of how I want it and melt it, I come up here to where the lens side will be. And it commence with melting in right where the termination of the 8 mil rod is. I'm both blowing off the excess fume and melting in the 8 mil rod at the same time. Now I'm also going to start to drag my left hand again. Slowly as I push with my right hand, into where my 8 mil terminations are, starting to slowly make a Maria. This will be the base of the lens. Kind of key here to spin slowly. Slowly dragging. Not you don't want to get a really tight spin with these ashes. It doesn't look very good. You want to keep your spiral rather on the looser side. Maybe two times around, two and a half times max. Marvering is also important during this process to try to get the glass to, to seal up around the rest of this ash without having to be patient with melting it there because in that melting it there a lot of off-gassing can happen and that's where the nitrogen that's in the bone fragment starts to well up within the glass and become these massive uncontrollable ever-growing air bubbles. Once that starts to happen too bad, you basically have to start over. It's not going to, you're not going to get it to stop. You can't dig them out. The gas just multiplies. So it's important to get them in case to where the flame isn't touching them as quickly as possible. So now that we've got something close to what we want. One of the ways it helps with getting these ashes quickly encased is by at this point putting your backing on. Defining my termination really good because we're going to back this now. Like that. Kind of important to whatever you back it in be a dark color. It shows off the fume vest. Um, it can have sparkles in it. It can even be a really dark red, like this dark garnet. I kind of like look at what color the fume is that's in there, what's really showing up good. I'm thinking red won't be the color. Maybe some heavy blue leprechaun that'll look pretty good so because I don't have a stringer of this stretched out right now we're gonna quickly do that so I attach this chunk of rod to the end of my work slowly run out a stringer that I can use Three to 
Three millimeters is about best. Four max. Four is gonna be a little much because you gotta apply a lot of heat to melt that even. Kind of key to lower heat, less off gassing right now is what your the motivation for or doing this back in this way. Stand cool for a second. back to business. So we want to continue backing this, the core of this pendant. Simply by coiling this stringer all the way around. So basically I run the bottom of my coil to the end of where the ash and fume pattern is terminate. That will define the edge between the lens and the back.
So I got a nice termination there. We'll punny up to this and then pull it off and pull my lens. The cooler the flame you work during all of this, the better off. Sometimes it slows the process down just a moment, but keeping that nitrogen from coming up is key. And the more and longer you heat these, the more chance of that happening. <clears throat> Especially if you were unable to like get it down to just very fine dust. There's bone fragments in there. The more they get heated, the more they off gas. Got a nice defined back in the front. Pop this bunny off and put a new one on 90 degrees. important when pulling your belt, you get your punny totally centered when you're connected. Like Alright, we're
Now I'm heading to where I'm going to pull my bale. He rises, so I want to keep the very tip where I'm going to first connect the most hot. But to let the heat rise to the rest of the body of the pendant is important. This way you get a nice even pull for your bale on the first try. Because these are relatively thick because of the deep encasement. It takes a minute to get it hot enough to like pull all the way through to the center. And sometimes a 5 mil rod is not the best to connect with. So, just have to up the ante a little bit here. This is why they call it glass blowing, ladies and gentlemen. That right there. Oh wait, what was that? Triple blown. I know, keep my day job, right? So there's what will be our bail. Nice, even, fluid pull. Real important to always keep rotating, either rocking 180 degrees or completely around in 360. It almost doesn't matter, it's just about the continuous movement that keeps the glass flowing properly and linear. Keeps the heat kind of centered within that glass. So we remove that punny and then we get ready to let our bale droop. I apply a bunch of heat to the very back of this. I come around the front because she's so thick and get her warm too. Back to the back so she starts to drop like that. Make sure she stays centered. Come back in right near where the bend begins and heat once more. So drop nice and even close to the thing like that. Get the back of that pendant really hot, the bell really hot, and then quickly just tap with a tool to a fix. When fusing this together, you want to completely go around the whole pendant so it all becomes one and uniform. Once you're fused and you got a nice clean hole for the diameter that you're looking for, check the front, make sure she's clean and centered. That's when I polish the lens really good. <coughs> We prepared it just now. Oh wait, no. Um, pulled off this stick thingy. I think they call it a punty. Punty guys and gals. No fucking clue what that really means. I think I might be a little bit too fused on here for this, but maybe not. Final polishing. And there she be. Cremation pendant number one.